like the third day uh, on Angua, okay? And we were starting to move forward, okay? And a uh, sniper in a tree where we were passing by dropped a couple of grenades. And it caused a lot of damage. Uh, one guy, he was an American Indian, you know, uh, Native American Indian, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. He wound up losing two legs. I was fortunate that I didn't go into Peleliu. Uh I went into Angor. Our regiment went in Angor. The Marines went into Peleliu on the 15th of September. They didn't get off the beach the first night. And uh, one particular company in, uh, in the 1st Marine Division had 80% casualties. Wow. All right. Uh, and then uh, they were able to get off the beach after this, the first night and second day. They were sitting there waiting for them. And we had one regiment uh, in support of the Marines when they went in. So they went in the 15th, and after the, we knew that they were off the beach on the second day, we went into Angor, uh, two of our regiments. There was one regiment backing up the Marines, uh, and then the other two regiments went into Angor. And after five days, uh, one of our regiments went to back up the Marines, and by the eight days, uh, uh, we were left alone on Angar, and the two regiments went in in support and relieved the Marine Division. By the eighth day already, the Marines had 48% uh, casualties for their whole division. Okay. That's every other man, practically. And we were in Angar uh, for over two months. I was lucky, okay, that I was able to get a furlough and I was home for December. Right. And okay. I got a chance to go to the stage store canteen. In Manhattan, like a USO club, where you had volunteers uh, at the stage store canteen that were actors, actresses, name people, personalities, okay. uh, who worked at the stage door canteen. I, I don't know. I don't know if you remember the song, I left my heart at the stage door canteen. I met a girl there by the name of Eileen. <laughs> uh, that's the way you go. Despite all serving in violent battles, including D-Day and the Battle of Angar, Ben, Eli, Sam, and Ira came home from the war without any serious injuries. Eli did, however, get hit by a piece of shrapnel in Angar, from which he received the Purple Heart. See, it hit me in the back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the way they put it on my service record. Okay. But I felt that it hit me uh, right in the neck, okay. you know, uh, because it, it hit the rock. That's right alongside of where this one buddy of mine was killed, right? I say somebody was looking after us. You know, we, we were just a lucky family. I was the only one with a Purple Heart, and it wasn't a major injury. That we all came back, the four of us all came back. Why them and not me? Our entire division lost, 40, we had 48% casualties. That's, you can almost say every other guy was a casualty, either uh, injured or killed. Uh, we lost a, a lot of people. We did. Why me? Why was I spared and they were not? And I was right alongside of them or very close to them. I gained the confidence to go on to college 
to get my degrees of bachelor's and master's. Uh, I, this was something. It's the bronze star, the purple heart, uh, and over oh here, yeah, let's see. The Pacific area of operation. There's two uh, stars there and one arrowhead. The arrowhead was for the first, if you were in the first three waves of an invasion, I was in the second wave. In other words, uh, like six boats circle around and then hit the beach at the first. Okay. So actually, uh, the, f the first wave went to our l left. The second wave went to the right. So we were on the extreme right. And the third wave, which we were originally supposed to be a part of, they had trouble in the, the second wave. So we moved up to the second wave. So we hit the right flank because we were the third, third platoon. So you had the first and second platoon were going to do it. But the uh, tractor uh, that had the second platoon in it uh, came in later on because they had trouble uh, with putting it all together. Okay. So we were in the second wave. So there's two bronze stars uh, and one arrowhead. The arrowhead you get if you were in the first three waves. I see. See, these were the, these were the guys that weren't always supposed to live. Right. They were waiting for them. We were in, uh, let me see. Uh, this was uh, the victory medal. Uh, the, this was the Philippine Liberation Medal. And I'm standing behind a guy, and he had an injury on the back of his neck. I said, that's got to be Jack. He was one of our guys in our platoon. And I said, Jack. He turned around. He looked at me, and I looked at him. I says, you're Jack Kessler, right? He says, yeah. I said, remember me? I was in company C in the third platoon. We were in there together. And he couldn't believe that we had met this way on the subway. I recognized his wounds on the back of his neck. After that, we got together. Uh, he came here because he says, I'll come to you.